Hello to everybody that is already joining. Uh, we will wait for one more minute uh, to make sure that everybody has sufficient time to log in um, and also join the session. So um, please be patient. Uh, we will start the webinar within one minute. Okay, I just got the signal. Um, we are about to uh, start the webinar. Uh, first of all, um, I would like to welcome you uh, um, very much um, on behalf of uh, Mitsubishi Chemical Group. Um, this webinar is hosted around the Composite Engineering Challenge. And we also do this together with uh, one of our trusted partners uh, together with, uh, with Revolver. And my name is Tim Vorage, um, and I will be your host during this, uh, during this webinar. So once again, uh, welcome, and great to see uh, that many participants. Um, I think we have over uh, for, uh, participants over 10 different countries, so that's always, uh, always good to see. Um, for those that cannot join, um, this webinar will also be available uh, on demand afterwards, and also for you to further review. So let's uh, dive into this. Uh, what are we going to discuss today? Um, there are actually three uh, important topics. The first one, we will give you a short introduction to our business incubator, Growth Garage. Um, who, who are we? Uh, what is our team doing? Why are we doing this? Uh, and of course, we also make the link towards the Composite Engineering Challenge, which is the main topic of today. Um, we will give you all the ins and outs, um, um, and especially, of course, I can imagine that you will be interested to learn what do you need to do to actually win. So we also spend some time on that topic. So let's dive right into it. Um, my name is Tim Vorajem. Um, I am the founder and also the senior manager of the business incubator Growth Garage um, of the Advanced Materials Division in Mitsubishi Chemical Group. Uh, we have an important motto um, in our business incubator, um, and that's in the end, uh, to meet the challenges of tomorrow, uh, we have to nurture the visionaries of today. Um, and I probably don't have to explain what these major challenges are in the world. Um, we have um, global heating, um, a scarcity of, uh, of water, uh, we have a growing population, um, and we have uh, things like global heating, um, uh, an aging population that also needs attention. Um, and we also are sure that there are a lot of visionaries around the globe um, among this audience uh, that actually have solutions uh, to tackle these big challenges. And we are here to support you in tackling these challenges. So why do we have this business incubator? Um, and why are we promoting open innovation? And why are we reaching out to you? We hear a lot, let's say, in the world that innovation um, is really all about big ideas. Um, in essence, yes, that is part of it. Uh, but we also strongly believe that it is only an innovation if that big idea also finds implementation. Um, and that is something uh, where we come in and also where we are willing to support you. Today, we are not only talking about innovation, but actually also about open innovation. And what does that mean? That also means that we would like to collaborate together with you. Um, within our business incubator, within Growth Garage, uh, we are working with um, a lot of different partners inside Mitsubishi Chemical, but also outside um, in the industry. Um, so that also means that we have um, a broad network, a broad ecosystem a system, um, that is able to support you. Um, so who are these partners? Um, as mentioned, um, these are partners, but also um, uh, people that are part uh, from our expert jury panel. Uh, that is not only there to look at submissions, but is also there uh, um, so you can reach out to them and also get in contact with them. Um, 
We mentioned here, let's say, a couple of our partners. In the middle, you see Weevolver. Um, that's a platform that we closely work together with uh, in our engineering challenges um, for many years now. Um, so also a, a big welcome uh, to um, all the colleagues from, uh, from Weevolver. Um, and there you also can see um, companies like ATC, um, a producer of thermoplastic composites. Um, in the US for the aerospace market, uh, uh, we have somebody in the jury from Specialized. Uh, we have media partners like Composites World and, and JEC, um, also where we are working together with um, and also helping us to not only, let's say, promote this uh, engineering challenge, but also to help you to search for more exposure about your great ideas, about your products, about your applications. And furthermore, I would like to mention Diamond Edge Ventures. Um, uh, that's our corporate venture um, 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 arm. And they're also um, part, of, uh, part, of this, uh, part of this group, part of this challenge. Um, and also there, if you have funding requirements, uh, you also can get in touch with them. And furthermore, I would like to mention Nordic Bionics and, and Airborne, of course, AMI. Mapogee Grid and, and, and Neuro Robotics, who also recently joined our expert team. So as you can see, we are always further expanding our ecosystem and also making it more relevant for you to make sure that we have the right expertise on board to help you and your big ideas even further ahead. So um, the Business Incubator um, has an open innovation platform. Um, on which we really foster open innovation and we are looking for collaboration with innovators, with entrepreneurs and actually with you uh, to make sure that we can also support you. Um, and, and in the end, it's all about, let's say, tackling those, uh, those big challenges. Um, as I said, open innovation for us is not only the big idea, it's all about the implementation. Um, and there we are able to support you. Um, on one hand, not only with looking what are the materials that you would require. Uh, we also have to help you selecting the right ones, um, designing, uh, creating a prototype, scaling actually um, uh, the product. Uh, but we also have experts around the industry, um, even in marketing, um, in business intelligence. Um, we are working together with a venture group. Um, and of course, we can also make sure that your big idea also um, gets global exposure on our platform with our media partners. So as I said, um, we are going to help you with implementing, um, but of course, there are a couple of selection criteria um, your submission needs to meet. Um, and a couple of them are, let's say, the technical feasibility, uh, the commercial feasibility. We will look into scalability of your, uh, of your idea. Um, but of course also the team that you are working with and um, if you have the competences and capabilities uh, to follow up with us um, and of course all the uh, any idea that favors let's say sustainability um, uh, would be great um, what do we mean with that um, ideas that um, on one hand avoid um, um, uh, waste and ideas that um, support let's say the circular economy or reduce co2 emissions um, in any way uh, those ideas are typically favored. Um, I will come back to the selection uh, criteria um, a little bit more elaborately later during the webinar. Um, as said, we have an open um, innovation platform. Um, so you can find us online um, if you have not already. Uh, we have a homepage with a lot of information on how we typically work uh, with the finalists, with the winners, um, what kind of challenges we have already done in the past, um, and also more information, of course, on the Composite Engineering Challenge. You can find more information regarding the judging criteria, um, including a download, and that you can also read it, let's say, in, uh, in, in, in peace uh, with a cup of coffee, uh, to really make sure that um, your submission also is able to meet those criteria. And of course, you are able to apply. So all of this you can find on our, uh, on our um, uh, Open Innovation Platform. Um, as said, we have already done a couple of engineering challenges at this time. Uh, the Composite Engineering Challenge is actually the fourth one that we are doing. Uh, so far, uh, we have worked with uh, very different companies, uh, different fields, um, from drones to robotics or even autonomous uh, delivery vehicles. So a big variety. Uh, you only see a couple of winners here because typically we have two or three winners per 
uh, engineering challenge and also in this one we actually have three separate winners i will come back let's say to the awards that we have and and also the packages uh, that come with it that help you let's say to realize your big idea um, a bit about our track record so for the past engineering challenges uh, we had almost 150 uh, submissions uh, from over 33 countries um, and in the end announced 35 finalists um, and typically also we ask the community of Revolver also to choose a winner so it's not only the expert jury panel and um, it's also the community that is going to um, uh, judge on the submissions um, we've spent um, um, on support over 100k um, and at this moment we are working with um, almost 20 startups and scale-ups um, so we're building quite a track record around the globe so what you can you expect from us um, in the end we also very much realize uh, that all the ideas are different uh, that you in your startup or scale-up or innovative company um, are at a different stage with your product or in a different stage with your business that also means that we are going to tailor the support uh, towards your needs. Um, so what does that support entails? Um, it's a selection actually of um, uh, the list that you see over here. Um, and I will shortly go through. And um, we give you guidance, of course, in selecting the right material and technology. Uh, we support with the design um, of the part, also design it for manufacturing. And also depending, of course, on the series size that you intend to make, and we are able to support you with material samplings, with prototyping. Um, we have simulation expertise on board. And of course, we also can make a cost prognosis. Um, depending on the series size, depend on material and technology, uh, what the costs eventually will be of the parts that you are going to produce. Um, as said, collaboration is important in open innovation. Um, so that also means we give you access to our network. That means not only to our online community, but also to our partners and to our jury members. And furthermore, you will get access to industry experts, but also experts in the field of sustainability and, and market intelligence. Um, we also have the opportunity to expose you to potential customers. Um, and of course, we also will link you to our senior management in our Mitsubishi chemical group. Um, and you are able to get in touch with our venture group, Diamond Edge Ventures. Um, lastly, let's say, of course, via our media partners, we will make sure that your big ideas uh, get exposure um, around the globe. Um, so that is also part of the package. Um, as I said, this is um, very broad and will be tailored um, in the end to your needs. Having said that, giving you a short introduction on the business incubator, why we do this and, and, and let's say how we can support you. Um, it's time to dive further into the, into the composite engineering challenge of this year. We realize, let's say that in the field of composites and producing lightweight parts, that there is still, let's say a lot of manual labor. And if you are producing your first prototype or even your first 10 or 100 pieces, um, a lot of the parts are being produced, let's say, in hand or manual layup or even with spray layup. The question of course, what happens if you want to produce hundreds or thousands or even ten thousands of parts? How are you going to scale your production? And in the end, it might be difficult to do what you are already doing. It could be too much manual work, maybe too labor intensive. Uh, you have very long cycle times. Um, or even let's say the parts that you produce are not reproducible. Um, so that means you have to find other ways to scale your production uh, and to scale with composites. Um, furthermore, we also see some uh, in our community, um, uh, we receive some messages, hey, um, I really would like to improve my part performance. Um, and also there with choosing the right materials, with choosing the right manufacturing technologies, you also are able, let's say, to further improve part performance. So if you recognize yourselves in this and are you, if you are producing lightweight parts, probably in a, in a manual way, uh, then we also can support you to really step up um, and also produce more in series production. So in the end, we are going to challenge the status quo. We are going to rewrite the rules of scaling 
and we are inviting you, all innovators, entrepreneurs, early adopters at startups, scale-ups, and innovative companies um, that really intend to scale their functioning prototype or already have a small series production of any application part or product uh, that you are producing, let's say, with lightweight carbon fiber reinforced composite materials. If you have the ambition to really scale your business, to scale uh, your production, um, then you are really, let's say, um, on the right spot. Um, and we would kindly advise you, let's say, to participate in this composite engineering challenge. Um, what kind of applications, part of products are we actually talking of, uh, about? Um, and this can be a huge variety. Uh, we just listed a couple of cate categories. Um, I also have to um, 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 notify you um, if you have applications uh, that do not fall within any of these categories, don't worry, um, this challenge is also open for you. Um, we see a lot of applications and products in the field of uh, reducing fuel economy by light weighting, um, eventually, let's say, to reduce uh, the amount of CO2 emissions. Um, typical applications are with a new mobility, um, autonomous delivery vehicles, uh, but we also see aerospace and marine there. Um, in the second category, we see uh, companies that, in try, that in try to improve accuracy, for example, uh, within robotics, um, or want to increase speed or reduce energy consumption of moving parts. Um, also there, uh, UAV or, let's say, um, um, uh, autonomous um, 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 aerial vehicles are also possible. Um, category three is all about improved performance, um, so um, a reduction of uh, vibration, uh, damping performance, crash resistance, but also corrosion resistance. Category four is about improving process efficiencies. Um, there we see that with some of the composite technologies, composite manufacturing technologies, uh, we can do part integration, uh, where you can go from five parts to one part, for example, or have a much easier assembly process, um, um, reducing the complexity in the end of your production. And category number five um, is around improving the well-being of people. Um, so also there we see typically applications uh, within wheelchairs, for example, exoskeletons, or maybe even bionics, let's say in broader sense, um, but also in medical instrumentation or uh, bicycles, for example. So in the end, let's say a broad range of applications is possible. Um, as said, if you are not on the list, still feel free to participate in this composite engineering challenge. Um, I think I can imagine that you're also curious on what kind of materials and production processes uh, we have, let's say, within our toolbox to support you. Um, so a little bit about this. Um, in principle, you can divide it, let's say, in two areas. Um, on the right, you see the thermal set materials, uh, the forge molding compounds, um, typically with uh, a carbon fiber of um, around two and a half inch, um, or the prepregs that some of you also probably are familiar with, um, can be woven or non-woven um, in combination with, uh, for example, epoxy or vinyl esters. So that's the thermal set part. Um, on the other part, you also see uh, materials um, that either, let's say, can be used for 3D printing or injection molding, like Chiromax, for example, um, with carbon fiber fillers, let's say, up to 40%. And um, Chiromax, um, a material uh, that is a fleece that can be used for the production of parts. Um, and you see one example of our partner ATC here, um, or even unidirectional tape like Chiron Ultra. So all of these materials are to your disposal. All of these materials can be used, sometimes even in combination. Um, and of course, they also um, come along with um, um, a design package, uh, but also different ways of manufacturing. This whole toolbox is supported um, with recycled polymers, but also with recycled carbon fibers um, or even bio-based resins. Um, in the end, uh, we will support you to reduce the carbon footprint of your product as much as possible. And um, so this is also something that we typically um, offer to, uh, to the winners. Um, a bit of a deep dive on current text to also give you a bit of an impression of one of these, let's say, material types and how that could support you. 
Um, carbon tax is one of our carbon composite uh, um, material platforms. Um, with a novel technology uh, called dry impregnation, we are actually able to produce organofleeces, as you can see um, in the middle. Uh, they look like uh, a textile, they look like clothing. Um, so it's a combination of polymer and carbon fiber. And interestingly, uh, we are able to put it in a mold um, and with some pressure and temperature, you directly can produce finished parts. Um, and you're able to do that not within hours, no, you are able to do that within minutes. And typically this comes with an amount of automation, meaning that you are able to reduce your costs and also further improve the reproducibility of part production. In the end, because of the drapeability of this material, you also have a high freedom of design. So that means that for some of the applications from people that are actually here in this webinar, this could be um, uh, one of the solutions. It doesn't necessarily have to be because we have that whole toolbox to our disposal um, and in the end we can pick and choose what would be best in your situation. Um, this is just to give you an impression of parts that are possible uh, and as you can see some of these shapes are quite complex and can be in combination even with, uh, um, um, with water jetting or with cutting or um, in combination with adding inserts. Um, and as you can see, also um, quite big shapes like um, a helmets can be uh, made out of it. So the freedom of design is, uh, is absolutely great. Um, in the end, what we are trying to do is um, make a translation from your prototype, probably produced, let's say, in a relatively manual way, to see how these more advanced materials and technologies can also help you to really scale production uh, go to a higher number of, uh, of parts and reduce the costs and keep your freedom of design and, and really, let's say, um, improve the professionally, uh, professionality of your, of your production. And meanwhile, we also try to improve the carbon footprint of your solutions uh, by, for example, using bio-based materials or recycled carbon fiber, which is available at industrial scale. Um, and we also try to see if we can design and support you to design your part such uh, that it also fits within the circular economy. And as we will also offer to take back any waste during your production process and even end of life, we also are able to take back the products. And um, so also there you don't have to worry that, that it in the end will be a, a waste um, or, or even ends up in landfill. If you want to know more about, let's say, all the solutions that we have in our composite toolbox, uh, please visit composites.ancam.com and, and you can see this for yourselves. So as said, um, um, we will tailor our support to the winner um, based on the stage of your business, based on the product uh, uh, that you have at this moment. Um, and you have, let's say, this whole composite toolbox, but also these expertises to your disposal. Um, and um, we have a discussion, let's say, in the end with the winners, what makes most sense to them. Um, so I can imagine that you would like to tap into, let's say, all these resources. Uh, so we kindly invite you to do so. Um, and of course, you also want to know, yeah, what do I need to actually win? Um, before we dive into that, um, first of all, what are the awards uh, this time? Uh, first of all, we have the jury winner. Um, so together with um, all the partners from Mitsubishi Chemical, from our venture group, but also the external companies, and um, we are going to select, based on a selection criteria, we are going to select, let's say, the winner. Um, in the end, that winner will uh, receive uh, a support worth of 25K. Uh, this is the first award. The second award is the Innovation Award. Um, and there we are going to award the most impactful um, and differentiated, really innovative idea. And that also uh, means that uh, this idea uh, may not, let's say, be as advanced, let's say, in the development stage yet. Uh, but if it has the potential, let's say, to disrupt the market, um, you're able to receive the innovation award. And we will support you also with um, 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 yeah, the different uh, different categories worth of 10K. In the end, we will also ask the community of Revolver um, to see which 
submission, they really prefer to win. And um, so that also means that there will be, uh, we will create a lot of exposure for the finalists. And then in the end, the community is going to vote. Uh, typically over a thousand uh, people in the community vote. And so that's really interesting to see how the community is thinking about your submission. Um, what are the key dates? Uh, we have uh, launched uh, this composite engineering challenge uh, two and a half weeks ago on October 25th. Um, and there will be an early bird closing on November 30th. What does that mean? Everybody that submits uh, their idea before November 30th also will get uh, um, a round of feedback by our expert jury panel. And that means that you also, based on this feedback, um, get the possibility to further improve uh, your submission. Um, and that also, let's say, means that you increase the chance of winning. The overall uh, challenge will close um, at the end of this year on December 31st. Um, and then it will be followed up by uh, the finalist announcement on January 11th. Um, and of course, also looking forward to the winner announcement on January 31st. So this is, let's say, the overall list. Um, so we kindly invite you to submit. Um, and you do have, let's say, a bit of an advantage if you submit before November 30th. As said, we will look into quite some, uh, quite some uh, criteria. The first of all is the technical feasibility. And typically we use the technical readiness level there. And you can find more about this on our website. And we are going to assess um, how far you already are with your prototype. Um, did you already, um, is it still in laboratory phase? Did you already do some testing with potential customers? Are you already in production? Um, so these different levels uh, can be found, let's say, on our website. Secondly, we look, of course, into the commercial feasibility. Um, and there we consider uh, the business model that you have. Um, is it a linear model? Is it a circular model? Um, are you selling a product? Is it a service? Uh, we will look into the value proposition and um, how strong that is and um, to what extent are you able to differentiate versus your competition do you already have customers um, are you in an mvp stage so all of these let's say contribute to assessing the commercial feasibility of your solution third one also very important of course the scalability and um, there we look at um, uh, two main topics the first one is the manufacturing readiness level um, uh, to really judge where are you at this moment. Of course, this challenge is also about supporting you to further advance in the manufacturing readiness level. So there, it's definitely not a problem. And um, if you are in a very early stage, if you are still are in a very manual stage, because we are, we are also, let's say, um, here to support you to further advance in this step. But we would like to understand where you are at this moment. Um, the other part is the team. Um, of course, we're also interested with whom we are going to work and our team is going to work. What are your competences? What are your capabilities? How diverse is your team? Um, and how um, um, are you organized, let's say, to also work with us to really implement um, your big idea? And as last already covered is the sustainability part. Um, submissions uh, that have elements of sustainability in there are being favored. Um, whether that is, let's say, towards zero waste, uh, reducing the carbon footprint, um, CO2 emissions, um, or even um, uh, the circular economy, um, those um, are favored um, uh, above um, the ones that uh, do not reduce uh, CO2 emissions, for example. Um, we can imagine that uh, this is a lot, let's say, to, uh, to cover. Um, that's also why we have some online assets available uh, for you uh, to be downloaded um, and you can take, let's say, some time to go through them. And we advise you to do so. Uh, typically, we see that the submissions that have made use of these documents um, really have a high quality and increase their chance of winning. Um, in the excited document, uh, you can see um, some of the previous, uh, the previous winners. Um, you can see what they have done um, and also what this has brought, let's say, to their business. Um, uh, some of them really accelerated um, uh, and are accelerating their company at this moment. So that's absolutely great to see. And there is an entry pack uh, where you can um, 
go through, let's say, all the requirements that are necessary for a submission. Uh, you can go through the judging criteria as set. Um, and also we have a document available around our last engineering challenge around the circular economy. Um, if you want to look um, um, one more time about the introduction of this, um, you also can go on YouTube. And even there we have a video for you to your, um, uh, to your disposal. So we are um, getting, let's say, at the end of this, uh, this webinar, and uh, we are asking to you, to everybody that is joining, um, are you ready to really rewrite the rules of scaling with lightweight carbon composites? Um, we are really excited to see some of those submissions coming in. Uh, we already have quite a couple of submissions in, um, and we are really curious uh, to see if anybody of, in this audience is also going to submit. Um, so make sure you do it before November 30th, uh, then you get another round of feedback. Um, but please make sure that you do it before year end. So looking forward, our team is looking forward and, and also our jury panel um, is looking forward to see all those uh, submissions uh, stepping in. Um, and then we are, let's say, um, at the end of this webinar. Um, it's also open, of course, for questions. So I'm really curious to hear um, if there are already some questions from this um, audience. Let me shortly check also myself. Um, I see one question coming in around um, intellectual property. Um, yeah, a, a very important one. Um, um, just to make sure for everybody that is joining, uh, we or any of our partners, we will not claim um, any um, IP rights. Um, please make sure if you are uh, submitting that either you own the IP rights um, or at least that you are not infringing, let's say, um, um, anybody, uh, uh, let's say, IP, IP that, is, uh, that is around, um, just to make sure that, uh, that you are on a safe flight. So as I said, um, we are not claiming any IP rights. Um, let me check if there are. Other questions? Um, yeah, somebody is asking um, around, um, and they only have, let's say, a beta version available. Um, of course, it is no problem to enter if you are in that, let's say, very early stage. Um, of course, it would be interesting to hear if you have already tested um, um, with some, uh, some customers. Um, of course, that is, let's say, an, an, an added value. Uh, but still, if you are in a very early stage, if you are producing, let's say, in a manual way, it is no problem to actually um, um, enter this uh, this uh, this competition. Let me check if there are some other questions. Um, yeah, um, no, there is no limit, let's say, to uh, the di diversity of the applications, whether that is in, in robotics or drones, uh, marine, uh, new mobility, uh, there is no limits, uh, let's say, to the diversity. Um, please describe your application uh, well, um, um, show the multiplication potential, and also, let's say, how your idea can disrupt the market. And um, of course, that is always um, um, good to show this. Um, but um, everybody is, uh, let's say, kindly invited to uh, submit their, uh, their ideas. Tim, there, is, there are other questions coming in. Okay. Um, I will read them to you. How robotics can um, participate in this challenge? How roboticists can participate in this challenge? Um, I'm not sure, let's say, if I understand the, 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 the question well. Um, of course, let's say, in the field of robotics, um, 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 yeah, we see a bit of a trend, let's say, towards um, um, higher speed, uh, more accuracy, uh, where lightweighting um, uh, can play a role. Um, we can imagine, let's say, that your field of expertise uh, might not be necessarily, let's say, um, uh, the hardware itself, but that you are developing software. Um, but even if you are developing software um, uh, that would, let's say, um, uh, disrupt that market, um, and you need a partner um, that is supporting, uh, let's say, with the hardware and, and where you foresee, um, 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 let's say, carbon composites would play a role, um, then you also have the ability, let's say, to, uh, to join. So if you do not have the competences yourself, 
to produce, let's say, those parts. Um, 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 yeah, then there is, let's say, also a good synergy in, in actually partnering up. I hope I have, uh, let's say, understood the question in the, in the right way. The other questions are similar to the ones you already answered. So I think we can, uh, yeah, there will be a possibility, of course, to send also all the additional questions after the webinar to our um, email address that we will send afterwards. Of course. So everybody that participated, um, um, yeah, you will be able to contact us directly or go uh, uh, to our site. Um, feel free to reach out with any questions that you have. Um, uh, we are easy reachable or even via LinkedIn, uh, reach out to any of our team members. And then we are actually looking forward to, to see your submissions. Thank you very much for participating and hope to see you soon. Bye.